Now the topic of materials is quite a small one, but it's actually really interesting, especially if you're thinking about going to do mechanical engineering at university. Now it builds upon the work that you did at GCSE, and maybe before that, just simply by looking at springs. So on this uh, stand over here, I have a spring, and if you apply a force to it, the spring extends and it gets longer, and the size of the force is going to be proportional to the extension of this spring. Now that's what we know as Hooke's law, and that's provided we have this elastic behaviour where it goes back to its original shape when we take away the force. So at GCSE, you'll have looked at Hooke's law. So here we have the force, here we have the extension. Uh, sometimes we use an X, sometimes we use delta L for that extension. But effectively what we have is a straight line that goes through the origin. And if we were to work out the gradient, the gradient of that line is the spring constant K, which is F divided by E. And that's because there's an equation that says the force is equal to KE. The force is proportional to the extension. So at GCSE, we'll have looked at springs, and we look at them again at A level. We look at um, how we can do this experiment, we can calculate the spring constant, and look at the area under the line, which is equal to the elastic potential energy stored by that spring. We might take it a step further, perhaps, and maybe consider what happens if you have springs acting in parallel, or even springs in series, and how this affects things like the overall spring constant of these series of things. So springs in parallel and in series often come up in exam questions. Now, um, the other thing that we do really at A level though is we take, I guess we sort of expand, sort of no pun intended, we expand um, what we know about the behavior of an object to the behavior of the metal itself. And this means that rather than looking at the force, we look at the force per unit cross-sectional area. And this is actually what we call the stress. And rather than looking at the extension, we look at the extension compared to its original length. Um, so here's the extension divided by the original length. And this is what we call a strain. And we can now start to take data that allows us to look at the material properties, perhaps it's steel or aluminium or copper, and that's independent of the shape of that piece of metal. So this is where we look at stress strain graphs. And it might be as simple as having a piece of wire that we stretch in the lab. And basically we start to look at the shape of the graph. And then we can look at maybe the linear region at the start where we've got a constant ratio of stress to strain called the Young modulus. We maybe look at when it fails. And we can also see that here we have this elastic region where it would go back to its original shape. And up here we have plastic behavior. Just like we saw with the spring, that although it can be elastic, if we go beyond the limit of proportionality or the elastic limit, we then get into this region where it doesn't go back to its original shape and that's plastic behaviour. So pretty much that's it. This is what we learn about as we look at materials at A level.